we have Laser Pig with Shut Up About the F-35. I figured chat would find this incredible, as I will find this incredible. And then we get into Badger. <laughs> Hit funny pig. <laughs> so there were some funding and development issues with the uh, Osprey. In the as the military? It, yes. Incredibly. What? How? Sometimes military procurement isn't that good. How? Just just keep making the A-10, okay? That's <laughs> all I'm asking. It's good at its job. <laughs> we don't need the F-35 to do it. Just just keep making the A-10, okay? That's all I'm asking. It's good at its job. We don't need the F-35 to do it. I have started to realize that when you're talking about modern warfare, uh -huh. and in particular the weapons and machines of a modern warfare, the average person who wants to talk to me about it with their scruffy beards and their cardigans and their vacant stares, <laughs> even if they have a keen military interest, know as much about it as they do the female orgasm. <laughs> Which is not much. As some even claim it doesn't exist. I feel sorry for straight women sometimes, I really do. So with that in mind, discussing something like the F-35, which oh has been God. built for a future war in a world where things like suicide drones and smartphones exist uh -huh. and are accessible to things like local militias, is kind of easy to see why the average idiot whose war mind is still stuck in a 1970s concept of combined arms warfare right. might find it confusing and see it really only as a trillion dollar jet designed to just make a few generals rich and, and thus are considerably more susceptible to things like this. An article by Forbes, That's obviously failed. the Whoa. most credible website of all the internet, which states that finally the US Air Force has admitted that the F-35 was a bad right? idea. It's a terrible aircraft and they're now looking to replace it with a lighter F-16 style fighter designed for dogfighting. And if that was true, that would make Pierre Spray right and me, Laser Pig, wrong. And uh -huh. thus, I would owe him a deep deep apology. Uh -huh. But do I though? I mean, really, do I? Because uh, I know some of you may find this hard to believe, but this article posted on the internet by an internet site which dominates half my screen with an ad uh -huh. may not Whoa! be 100% genuine. What? In fact, in a fit of behavior so uncharacteristic Something of the, on the internet is media, true? this headline, which is the only part of the article most people have read, may be something of clickbait. What? I know! The shock! The horror! Chapter 3 of the 1926 Heresy, literary classic Winnie the Pooh describes the titular character Pooh Bear and his friend Piglet discovering a series of tracks which. <laughs> I've been on the internet too long. Because, <laughs> like. All I'm gonna say is, I should not have thought of she. That's all I can say. That's all I'm gonna say on that subject, YouTube. Which they assume to belong to a creature <laughs> known as the Woozle. Yet, as much as they follow these tracks and hunt of the mythical creature, they can never quite seem to catch up to it. Enter the book's protagonist, Christopher Robin, who, after some brief investigating, discovers Wonder that the tracks that Pooh Bear 15. and Piglet have been following Fair. were in fact their own. Amazing. And the Woozle does not actually exist. Since then, the term the woozle effect has been used to describe a situation where a claim is made with little or no supporting evidence, ah. usually in a book or an online publication, which then leads to various other publications citing it as a reference without checking it or doing any proper peer review. Further publications then cite them as a reference and so on yes. so forth until you have a chain of citations that simply reference each other as a sourceable material without ever actually presenting any credible evidence. Hence why things like Wikipedia or the fabled r slash ask historians uh -huh. are so frequently wrong. 
as their criteria for any claim to be considered credible is that that it has to Wait, have appeared a written Red, somewhere a Reddit thread in a wasn't book. actually Hence like why so many people what? think the F-35 is a useless, expensive garbage plane. Because, well, the press say so, and they say so because, well, the other press say, I say so, and therefore they say is. so because, well, the first lot of press said so, and, and then you follow it all the way back down the bullshit tree until you get to the Russian propaganda channel Russia Today. You've probably heard of it, and it's interviews with Pierre Spray, who until his death was an avid critic of the F-35, and the main source of most of the bullshit you heard about it. Despite the fact that he's never worked in the aerospace industry, and is more famous for lying about how big and important he was in the development of the F-15 or the A-10 or whatever no plane he's matters. claiming he designed today. Because once he worked in the closet in the basement of the Pentagon as an advisor to an advisor to an advisor to an advisor to the Secretary of Defense, who had absolutely nothing to do with the project, and whom Wikipedia still credits as the developer of the A-10, because, well, it was written in a book. I mean, what more proof do you need? Of course it's true. Someone wrote it down. It. Hi, it's post-production and very tired laser pig here. Quick note, at the time of writing the script for this video, Wikipedia still credited Pierre Spray as the designer of the A-10. Amazing. However, over the past month, there seems to have been quite a bit of back and forth, and it seems as of the first of this month, all references to Spray have been removed from the article. Huh. The some people do seem intent on putting it back up, so it may have reappeared at some point, and you know, it's Wikipedia. Um, part of the reason behind right, this no, you need multiple was really that the only real source for Spray's involvement paper. was the autobiography of John Boyd, who was one of the major players in the reformist movements. Now, this book was published after Boyd's death, and, and the author never actually spoke to him, only huh. his friends and colleagues, including one Pierre Spray, in which oh. he claims Boyd became interested in his work because of his involvement in the A-10 program, which is not true, they were locked in a waiting room together. But that would mean that the only source for Spray's involvement in the A-10 program is Spray himself. What? In a book in which he cites himself as a source, making him the <laughs> ultimate woozle. <laughs> Can I make this shit up? Anyway, back on with the video. I say, therefore, Once it, you get to I, that it point, is. You start God to realize it. that pretty much every claim, and I mean pretty much every claim, like 99% of what them made about the F-35 is simply a chain of spray saying something for money on a what Russian government-funded propaganda channel, and then it's every source, minor me, or major Do publication the, the tacking its own of our thoughts clip? and opinions onto it I'll and citing it. each other as a source in the world's dumbest game of Chinese whispers. Until we get to the point where a well-meaning podcast about engineering disasters advocates for the continued project of an aircraft that hasn't been built since the 70s, has killed more of its own soldiers than every other U.S. She aircraft combined, suffered this. the most losses out of any modern U.S. aircraft, Your project, and is hilariously project. Outdated, <laughs> as it requires its pilots to fly low and slow and use a pair of binoculars to identify targets, which it frequently misidentifies, is highly vulnerable to shoulder-mounted launchers, and requires a modernization package that is more expensive per unit than a brand new F-35, well. a plane they don't understand and would stick their fingers in their ear and scream, la 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 la, <laughs> I'm not listening. Meme Logic is better than reality because it's more funny and we need their views. La 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 la. <laughs> so, no, I don't owe Pierre Spray an apology, Amazing. regardless of what Forbes or the various podcasters or people in my comment section think. He is wrong. F 35, good. A 10, still questionable if it was ever effective to still begin with. Sussy. And is generally only remembered fondly by people because big gun go burr. <laughs> Please continue to write that in the comments. It only gets funnier after the 600th time. But let's say you're not me. You're Sebastian, the average femboy that infests my Discord. How do you, as just a regular guy in your programmer socks, spot a woozle in the wild? How do you know when media bias and lazy journalists have wrapped you up in their little tentacles? Well, literally just go up, find bio. sources. Literally I have a go question dig deep. for you. Do research. Has Easy. this ever happened to you? Welcome back to Piggy's Breaker. My son saw a swastika and now he's gay. What? what? My son saw a swastika and is now gay. What? Mom, I told you I'm 24 now. I just want to go out and drink beer. What has America done? What? Hi, I'm Laser Pig. By day, mild manner, pig shaped human. <laughs> 
equally as useless, but you legally know, not wrong, fucking. We've all been in that situation where we've been forced to return to the nest for the holidays and be confronted by the entire family who you never talk to. Your grandma makes a vague racist comment about people with blue hair. Your mom tries to defend them out of embarrassment because she took an online class in wokeness, and your dad picks up the newspaper and says the whole thing has something to do with 5G or trans people or single mothers or barcodes or whatever the media is trying uh, to make us all blame society. so we God don't damn. have to take personal responsibility for our actions. It's not your fault, it's never we your fault, it's society. them. The other people, the liberals, the gays, the neo-Nazis, boomers, capitalism, communism, I, I don't know, whatever. And only when we finally get rid of all of these people can we get back to normal and you get your just reward. Even if deep Deep down, you know they'll just find a new enemy to distract you with because as long as you're scared and angry, you'll keep buying newspapers, or subscribing to news services, or just clicking articles uh -huh. because of their catchy clickbait titles that trigger that deep emotional scar you have locked in your brain that causes you to be halfway through thinking like about the comment you'll post before you've even fully read that title that you'll share with all your dumb friends on Twitter like you fucking know anything. Now look down at your filthy, disgusting hands. Gaze into your broken mortal soul and ask yourself the question. There has to be a better way. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Laser Big. Do you wish there could be a better way? Well, now you can. Is I'm here with battery? ground news. Don't let the name fill you. It has nothing to do with the ground, sadly. You are not newsworthy, ground. <laughs> Ground News is not a disgusting mainstream oh God, media news network, but one of the first non-biased news comparison wow. websites. That's right! With Ground News, you can actually read the news without any of the Big bullshit. Brain. Finally! Big Manipulative brain algorithms? Gone! Media bias? Served! Echo chambers and confirmation bias? Ha! What even is that? I and am it was Sam founded Google. by a former NASA engineer, making her more qualified to talk about the F-35 than Pierre Spray! Ground news. Got him. Not only is every article sourced, it also estimates agenda bias on topics based on who else is covering them with these handy little French flags. So you know if stories are more biased towards the left or the right or the center depressing part. It even highlights potential media blind spots, letting you see what that man is trying oh to God. stop you finding out. Why was that Ground funny? News. It will even tell you your own media bias based on what you read, or with their free online quiz. But best of all, there are no judgments. No one's trying to manipulate you to one side or the other. It's literally just about transparency. They just want you to read the news. Ground News. I'm so excited about Ground News. I saw this boat in half. No bias is the boat. <laughs> we have entered and repaired it with the power of news. Ground news. This is yeah, yes, the Senate trick. elections. I know nothing about what's going on, but with the power of ground news, I can not only check related local news in each state, <laughs> I can even see who's covering what, and even see it news stories is. that would typically be hidden Nancy's from me. Wild. And all of them are sourced right back to the original articles, making it even easier to spot woozles, media bias, and break out of your cognitive bias echo chamber. Thomas, did you pay for this incredible news? Sign up is absolutely free. It's a website. That is amazing. You can just go look at it and read the news that hasn't been spoon fed to you by some disgusting mainstream media pipe organ owned by some fat ass billionaire from his home on Peter Pirate Adventure Island. But if you want access to more features like unlimited blind spot feeds, which is actually super useful, uh, factuality distribution, or even if you just want to support this tiny independent team who is honestly doing a great job. I mean, how many neutral parties can you name that actually commit to remaining objective, especially news? sources. Then prices start from 83 cents a month. That's wild. 83 cents. You can't even get a coffee for that. No. Screw that. Premium service is 249. That's that's like a penny less than the coffee I don't buy because all the coffee places around here are terrible and I brew my own because I'm not a fucking savage. Got or you can subscribe to Forbes for 49 bucks and get all your news from one source like Gross. your dumbass parents and just assume that they are fully researching all their facts and not just spit bowling whatever comes to mind because it sounds <laughs> okay. plausible and they're judged by how many articles they write and how many clicks they get and not about how good a journalist oh they are. 
background news. Click my link in the description to begin <laughs> your journey of news and get oh newsing with ground news. It Laser will change your folks. god damn life. I feel like Especially I'm, I if you're like that I'm one guy in my Discord who said these magic trip. words. No, I, I read info wars. I keep myself educated. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you need this more than anyone else. <laughs> anyway, Pierce Bray and other comedy self-proclaimed military experts were invited onto Russia today to speak in English and be broadcast in English, and no one found this slightly suspicious on how shit the F-35 is. And since then, we've had a collection of blog little... posts, Twitter accounts, and various web news sites that all continue to propagate the same rhetoric without uh -huh. ever actually checking if it's true. Say it with Just me now, the F-35 cannot maneuver, it can cannot carry missiles, it's really expensive, <laughs> it cannot defeat the nasty scene in the dark fight, it costs <laughs> over a billion pounds, it can't carry <laughs> Of course, it's all just a woozle. Spray cannot back up anything he ever said, and would often refuse to do so, and when he did, trip, his yeah. source was, well, himself, and the qualifications and experience he pretends to have, and projects that he had nothing actually to do with. Fun fact, in all the documentation I've seen in regards to the development of the F-15, which is when the reformers were in there. Like, let's let's do a little exercise chat really quick. Like, here, okay, I, I, as, I as Kaiju Kip allegedly own uh, Microsoft. Anyone can say shit on the internet, right? Okay, Kip, but uh, uh well, where's your facts? Oh, it's true because I said so. Chat knows, chat knows clearly I'm memeing. Chat knows it's japes. Like, I clearly don't own Microsoft. That is held by other people. Like, it's literally not hard to, like, who owns Microsoft? Type that under Google. Find, like, three different sources on the internet alone. Like, it's, it's, it's not hard. <laughs> Source, I made it the fuck up. Yeah, you're you're right, Naravar. I made it the fuck up. What? Your five page dissertation? No, I'm not reading all that. <laughs> Man, if I could have <laughs> But it's like just the woozle effect just like makes my brain hurt because it's it's not hard to like I maybe I'm the weird one here. It's not hard to look at something and be like, oh, someone says that they own Hollow Live or something like that. Cool. Does any other sources like, does any other source support this other than literally what you just said? If no, okay, I'm gonna need some sources, Captain. Like, that's not how that works. Like, I get wanting to break news first, don't get me wrong. But if you're gonna, like, spout crap and have wrong news, like, have, like, wrong information, it just makes you look dumb. Yagu would never lie. Uh, Yagu is best girl. I love Yagu. Prime, Spray is mentioned exactly it's not once. Hard. Uh, during a meeting to discuss contractors for the F-15's electronic systems, Spray reportedly oh barges in and demands that the F-15 <laughs> be canned in uh, favor of his own the, design, the, 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 the F-XX. Cool name, but it wasn't they really an aircraft design up. per like, se, it, it was just up. a list of things that he wanted removed from the F-15 which he felt were unnecessary. Uh, I'll list what some of these things were. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the navigation equipment, <laughs> the bulletproof cockpit glass, uh -huh. Uh, the ejector seat, the bomb and missile racks, or uh -huh. I should just say missile racks, uh, the nice. afterburner, the radar, and the fuel tanks. I'll briefly explain that last one. What? The fuel tank thing was a John Boyd thing. Uh, he fully believed that an aircraft should only have fuel for the dogfight and nothing else. And any extra fuel a plane might need to say, go somewhere, yeah. like, you know invade a country uh, would be done via external drop tanks, which obviously the plane would drop the second it encountered an enemy, but blow up that enemy with its superior maneuverability, what, what and then ditch in the field the after running out of fuel. Boyd also didn't, didn't kind of anticipate that, you know, you shoot down that fighter and then another fighter shows up yeah. and you have to fight that one as well. I, it's... This is kind of why the reformers, you know, started to get laughed at. Um, but Spray wanted to take all that useless shit off the F-15 and replace it all with a radio you could 
buying a hardware store because you know it's, it's a radio. It does what radios do. Try to use logic. A completely oh, unsecure mm, commercial I, I radio and a, and a military aircraft. What could internet. possibly go wrong? Um, the same Go 8 cannon used on the A10 because it's the best weapon, obviously. And that stick that onto what is essentially a MiG-21. Oh <laughs> he was laughed out of the room. So, in regards to the Forbes article, no, the Pentagon, the U.S. Air Force, or pretty much anyone else for that matter, uh -huh. has not admitted the F-35 was a failure. Uh, the whole okay. thing, if you actually read the article and kind of read between the lines, is about how now the Air Force is seeking a potential replacement for the F-16 okay, uh, yeah. to be used as a less expensive trader and patrol fine. craft and to give pilots their needed air times, well as, you know, perform low-risk missions in times where, you know, using an F-35 just wouldn't really be necessary, while maintaining the same kind of stealth capabilities as well as use the more modern, up-to-date missiles that are currently right. under development, but also to sell to Eastern European nations who can't quite afford That's to buy into the F-35 program, all of whom are now suddenly very interested in replacing their old Russian jets for some weird reason. Uh -huh. The ungrounding of this article and the propagation of the bullshit that the F-35 has somehow failed is on the work of one Dan Ward, another proud member of the reformers cult and author of the book The his, Simplicity me, Cycle, his stare which makes obviously me gets a plug. <laughs> and with a book like that, I'm sure why. you could understand why the existence of a complicated fighter jet might confuse him. Uh, the engineering motto of keep it simple, stupid, is something that, you know, is a very good lesson to learn for engineers, but uh, basically it boils down to right? simple things to do simple tasks, i.e. don't Rupe Goldberg a machine that is overcomplicated for no reason. Like, these fucking rechargeable shoes. Ah! But the concept of keep it simple <laughs> yeah, stupid Perfect. kind of falls apart when you have to apply it to the idea of building a stealth fighter that can operate as an interceptor, ground attack aircraft, bomber, hover, land and take off from carriers, yeah. and operate in a hostile environment where things like lasers, drones, and, and over the horizon hypersonic stealth missiles exist yeah. while staying combat relevant for the next 50 that years. Not because we want one aircraft to perform all these roles and do all yeah, these things, be but because that is what an aircraft needs to be able to do to stay on top of a modern battlefield. Right. Do you see the problem? I it's mean, how do you do all that in a simple way? Because if you can figure that out, if you, if you can it. build that kind of plane that's that's cheap and simple, then congratulations, the US Pentagon would like Black a word. Complex Here's a billion right? dollars from the US Black Budget. Shut up and go do it. Prove it. In theory, it's very easy to demand things be kept simple and cheap, but in practice, the world does not quite work like that. And, and no, it can't be done just by putting bigger engines onto an F-15. You can't just keep upgrading legacy aircraft and expecting it to work indefinitely. That, that's no. not how anything works. That's like putting a new hat on a dead horse. It's a new hat, yeah, but it's still a dead horse. Uh, that he said, said that Dan does make a good point, and he is right. The F-35 is an expensive plane, especially to run. It's a high-end fighter, and if you have limited high-end fighters, you don't want them in places where they are simply being wasted, right. especially if all it's doing is giving pilots their needed airtime to remain qualified. That role has always been performed by the F-16, which the Air Force stopped purchasing in 2001 and now consider fully outdated. And ah, no, as I said before, it's not easy to just update these things. There is a flip side to making things cheap, and this is where people like Dan Ward have their failings. In his first book, Dan penned the idea of the fire system. Fast, inexpensive, restrained, elegant. Okay, I, I need to dissect this for a second. If you're going to make something, you need it fast, you need it cheap, you need to keep it within realistic expectations, and you need it to look good. We're, we're not even going to, like, you, people realize that this is, like, going to be problematic, right? Like, you know what's fast, you know, hey, you know what's fast, inexpensive, restrained, and elegant? Getting a new pair of shoes from a box store for $15. Is that not what this is? But you're going to keep buying it every two months because the shoes are going to get, going to get run out. Or, you can do your research you can buy the shoes that you know are going to hold up and that feel good and look comfortable and don't purchase shoes for the next, like, six years. Right? Is, am, I, am I wrong here? 
I just fucking ugh. As if style has something to do with combat effectiveness. I think he just needed an E and he couldn't really think of anything else. <laughs> what else? Yeah. Fast and expensive restrained elephant. Elephant. I don't know. His belief is that technological innovations can be acquired by small teams right, with small not, budgets on short months, deadlines so much money. faster and with less expense, as the limited time and budget forces the team to concentrate on the sole problem without getting distracted and adding extra features, uh -huh. which he believes engineers will simply add on a whim if they're too relaxed. You'll note here Dan Ward has no. never worked as an engineer on a design team. He worked in equipment testing. He now works as an advisor to a company that leases out management advisors to military contractors. You'd be amazed how many reformers seem to work <laughs> exclusively as advisors, not to the I military, that, but to third-party companies, or, or to their friends who sneak them on to inflated Pentagon that, budgets via the back door so they can pretend their stupid He's ideas have more credibility because, hey, look at all these experts Bro, that, that agree with me. Good, in one of Why his many publications, good. this one titled The Simplicity White Paper, Dan quotes the following. The pursuit of complex technology has resulted in the production of weapons that are high in cost, few in number and questionable in effectiveness. That is a quote from Fighter Mafia member Franklin Chuck Spiney so in, in his eight-hour-long briefing, Defense Facts of Life, which would become the manifesto for the reformist movement. It argued that simplistic weapons had historically always been more effective than complex ones, and the US Air Force's obsession with complicated high technology versus the simplistic rush weapons of the Soviet Union would lead to the country's inevitable doom. The complicated we So... The statement that the simple weapons, right, have generally proven more effective... Yeah, what, what has ganked more people in history? The Spear of the Lantern Shield. For those of you that don't know what a Lantern Shield is, go look it up. Like, Google Lantern Shield right now. It's, it's Italian, you, you can tell. Like, yeah... It's a, a stick with the sharp bit versus a shield sword combo with the hook to hold a lantern. Which one of these is gonna have have a, a higher KD, right? I that makes sense. But I mean, if you're gonna want, you know, a system that is going to do ten jobs, I, I'm sorry, simplistic is not gonna cut it. If you want simple, have one thing doing one, maybe two jobs, not one thing doing ten. At that point, you're shooting yourself in the foot, proverbially. The weapon he was talking about was, of course, the F-15, which was under development at the time. Spiney and the other Fighter Mafia members wanted the F-15 to be a raiderless gun plane. The Air Force ignored them, and the F-15 went on to become the most successful <laughs> fighter jet of all time, which at the time of recording still holds the highest air-to-air -air kill to loss record at 105 kills to zero They'll losses. Dan, of course, ignores this and goes on to complain about the complexity of the F-15 over the simplicity of the F-16, claiming that the mythology of keep it simple stupid meant that the F-16 had a development time of just eight months compared to the 13 years of the F-15, failing to understand, of course, that much of the technology used on the F-16, including the infrastructure that utilized in its creation, such as wind tunnels, was the result of the development of the F-15. The F-16 okay. was not a project that ran alongside the F-15 on a more constrained budget, and in fact came out much later, okay. development starting in 19. 74, yeah, two no, years I, after the F-15's first flight, and used much of the same technology a, uh, and expertise that had been developed for the F-15. The F-16 had been developed as a completely I, independent I project, it have would have probably taken agent. just as long on just as high a budget. Dan Ward, of course, ignores this because it would defeat his point. Ward's inability to differentiate between unneeded technology and technology he doesn't think is needed is why people like him and the rest of the reformers don't yeah. work in the yeah. military, and why videos like this need to keep being made to remind you all that the mainstream media is not a credible source as it once was. Subscribe to Ground News. But Ward was not hired for his expertise. He was hired because he is a walking flesh woozle production machine. <laughs> Everything he says sounds credible and has that ring of truth to oh, it, man. which is great if you run a management advisory company and want to show off oh, your man, credibility to stupid people who need management post. advisors. But like the rest of the reformers, he has absolutely no idea what he's talking about, is not qualified to even understand the basic principles of what he is talking about, and his arguments yeah, you, come entirely yeah. from thought-terminating cliches. 
I swear to God, if another person looks at me with that same shit-eating grin and says, ah, but jack of all trades, master of none, in relation to the F-35, I may suddenly start advocating for mandatory IQ phase. tests and the death penalty. Okay, this annoys me. I'm just gonna rant for a second here. The phrase jack of all trades, master of none, is supposed to apply to people who spend all their time learning new trades and skills uh -huh. as opposed to just focusing on one okay, thing and mastering it. Hell yeah. It doesn't really apply to a machine that can do two things. It's like claiming you need to drag a garden shed full of tools <laughs> along with you in a camping trip because your Swiss army knife is a jack of all trades and therefore not specialist enough for your needs. And now suddenly everyone else is pulling straws and who has to share a tent with you? Uh -huh. So when it comes to the F-35 and refuting the claims many make about it, I could tell you how important modern computers, in particular data link, which older aircraft don't have, has become. Or how difficult it is to program jets from the 70s to work with modern missiles, which is the equivalent of trying to install an RTX 3080 onto a fucking ZX Spectrum. <laughs> Or how big a I want to see it now. stealth has become in recent years, how detection range has become the deciding factor in who wins an engagement, not maneuverability, how modern day radar systems have nullified the anti-radar tactics employed by pilots in the 80s and 90s, even if they still do work in DCS world, how helmet-based <laughs> systems have meant that a plane no longer needs to point at whatever it wants to target, and how data link with drones means that aircraft can now fire at targets with missiles as equally as stealthy as they are uh -huh. from over 800 miles away, never showing up on the enemy's radar because they never actually entered the fucking country. In any future war, swarms of aircraft will fight battles, never having seen their opponents. Eyes almost entirely focused on a computer screen, information yeah. sent to them via systems on board drones and Which AWACS systems, hundreds or often thousands of miles away. And the destruction of those systems will take priority over enemy aircraft. But that doesn't sound cool. It doesn't bring the image most of us will see in their mind of World War III, the dogfights, etc. What is known as the Top Gun Factor. So it's kind of almost dismissed. Yeah. This is reality. Just Instead, the ego accepts awful. the possible of the fantasy and tries to justify it through references to past wars and the various buzz pieces and headlines that they know about and forget that the Korean War and Vietnam were over 60 years ago. And thus, the lessons of Korea or the lessons of Vietnam that the gun always beats the missile, bullshit, 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 the maneuverability of old Russian jets, etc., are now all completely irrelevant. Because modern war. That shit's complicated. And uh -huh. so it's easier, far easier in fact, to think that all the old fighter mafia bullshit from the 70s and 80s is still relevant. Because that's easier. Uh, and that we should judge modern fighter jets on 60 year old standards against jets that were built for a completely different style of warfare. It's easier to sit back and think that military procurement is a circus designed to channel taxpayers' money into a general's retirement fund. Because my mate Kevin, who was in the Marines and drove a truck around, slacked off half the time smoked a fuck ton of weed and never really advanced beyond basic says so. And the military <laughs> has unfortunately no I short supply of underachievers who sat around in reserves slugger. and like to complain about everything and anything, thinking they know a little bit more about us disgusting civilians because they were actually in the military. And what branch did you serve in? Ha ha ha, thought so, smug Luke. To put it simply, so in the most simple language that I can think of, and I, I, I tried doing this with a, with a group of English people in a pub, and it, it worked on them, so if it doesn't work on you, dear Christ. Uh -huh. The F-15, uh, the 16, the A-10, and whatever, is to the F-35 as the crossbow was to the gun. Uh -huh. I mean, the gun was loud and expensive and very difficult to use. It was also not particularly accurate. Right. It couldn't be used in the rain. I mean, Back to the day, very early guns more. here. So why would anyone want one when you have this elegant, quiet, simple weapon that can be knocked uh -huh. out by a half-decent craftsman in a basic workshop in about half a day? And yeah. the ammunition is literally just sharp sticks, which are everywhere. Any idiot Neat. can pick one up and use one. Guns are an expensive fad. The crossbow has always worked for us in the past. History says so. And so many people believe that. I mean, there are examples of generals throughout medieval Europe refusing to use guns and sticking with the crossbow. Right up until about 1503 Just and it's the new Battle it's of Sharon where about 9,000 of the most powerful troops right? Europe had to Sometimes offer with about necessary. 40 cannons led by one of the best commanders of the day with a complete tactical and numerical superiority, lost. Because his opponent had guns. <laughs> <laughs> oh,
In spite of all their apparent drawbacks, guns could do what crossbows couldn't, which was penetrate heavy armor uh-huh. and like cover and even shields. It made the concept of armor and shields completely obsolete, which yep. is why armies around this time kind of stopped using them. Uh-huh. And there are numerous examples of this happening all across the world. Guns had changed the face of war, and heavy armor and swords and crossbows, the old ways, just didn't work anymore. This was the dreadnought effect, something I've spoken about before. A period of transition where a single new invention changes the rules of warfare to a point where established conventional wisdom no longer applies. And in a way, that's where we're at with the F-35. War has evolved beyond what conventional wisdom and that tiny reptilian part of everyone's brain that tells them that fighter jets are awesome can logically process. You can't explain to the common public that Blitzkrieg is not a battle tactic that war works anymore in a simplistic enough way that fits into a Twitter post. I mean, people can... I thought, well, let me let me read his post first before I actually add input. So Blitzkrieg is not actually a tactic per se. It's it meant lightning war. And it's commonly used as a slur by the German general. Describe how quickly German would need to win a war to this fight issues. It has nothing to do with the infantry support. Okay, I can see that making sense. I was under the impression, at the very least, it was a... Uh, the, the philosophy that the U.S. Uh, armed forces twitter for angry scottish people i love that that's a thing actually i love this oh my god um it, it's the mil- the u.s military adopts a blitzkrieg a lightning war as a philosophy because it just works from my understanding i, I would have to have some service members who have you know went to, you know were in desert storm and who actually you know knew that probably you know cite that um, back that up, if you will, because I don't want to say things that are false or, you know, are contrary, to say the least. Um, it's from my understanding, at the very least, it was a philosophy that, you know, just go in, get it done, make sure that the opposition is going to be... They don't, they don't have time to mount a successful defense or anything like that. Uh, Technically derived from our their own world, which is interesting. Post-World War One Germany. No, people, a lot of people don't understand a lot of things. Compare the militaries of nations by looking at numbers. And the bigger number means, obviously, the better army. You no. know, the, the, the speed and armor of the firepower. The oh, Japanese this tank are so much better than that the tank. Therefore, this tank like, wins outnumbered the battle. To one. Oh, it's kind of fucking bullshit. But war doesn't work like that. You know, since Russia invaded Ukraine, we've had a number of popular media sites asking, why were the experts so wrong? The people who predicted that Russia could wipe out Ukraine in 48 hours were left scratching their heads and searching for the copium explanations that exonerated them from looking like an idiot. And this is where all the bullshit propaganda tropes come from, you know. Or or they haven't deployed their elite units yet, or or, this is only a tiny part of Russia's army. Uh We've yet to see the the full force come crashing down, or, you know, this is all part of Putin's grand master plan. Just you wait and see. Etc. <laughs> Etc. Et because Russia's numbers are bigger than Ukraine's, so logically they should be able to win, and they aren't. And this is confusing for them. And what these articles never really seem to consider is that the answer is not that the experts were wrong. It's that the experts, or the experts they were listening to, Weren't were qualified. not actually experts. Yeah. The term military analyst is not a legally protected term. It's, it's not like doctor. It's more like economist. You yeah. know, any asshole can start calling themselves <laughs> one and fart out a vaguely plausible opinion on the current situation. <laughs> real experts, the real analysts, and the Russian studiers, and you know, people who actually knew what they were talking about, knew this was all going to happen from day one. And many said so, but they were ignored because they offered complicated explanations to a very complicated situation. The reformers, meanwhile, the, the pretend analysts, the people like Spray and Ward and you know, whoever else who like, work or worked in third-party advisory companies and sell tickets to lectures, are not experts in military analytics. They, they should are be, though, arguably. They sell simplicity. Arguably, the person making the speech right now, though, realistically should be an expert. I mean, am I wrong in thinking that? If someone is going to make the bold claim that the F-30 five doesn't need the fuel tanks because oh well you just need enough you know fuel for the dogfight and you're done like why is the person that's not even qualified and doesn't even work on the damn thing why are they speaking about this like oh i get that you're an orator right i get it like why not have the people it makes you look more credible if anything right why not have the person working if not heading the project 
talk about it rather than getting lost through a mouthpiece that doesn't know what they're talking about. Maybe that's just me then. I'm like I get irrationally angry when people talk about things that they don't know, you know, why on this channel, right? The React channel um on Twitch, right? I get irrationally angry when people will be like, "Oh, I'm clearly an expert in this field." And it's like, "Bro, you're you're just a Twitter user." What? <laughs> Like, bro, do you even work in this field? Oh, no, trust me, bro, I do I do all the thing. Okay, what's your sources? Bro, I don't need just to cite you sources. I'm too smart for that shit. Okay, like, you gotta hand me something. Do you work in this field? Can you tell me what this basic thing in this field is? I don't know what you're talking about. And then we get back to square one. Fucking, ugh. Like, it actually makes me irrationally angry when people are like... Hence why I do my best to, like... I'm not a military specialist. I'm not. If I have a question about the military, even if I say something wrong or, like, like actually, Kip, that's not correct, I'm more than open to someone who actually knows what they're talking about correcting me so I can correct it, and that way I'm telling everybody the correct damn thing. More of that needs to happen. <sighs> uh, uh, armchair engineer. Uh, uh, yeah, fair enough. Um, no, this is a pretty good. Like, it's been a longer video. <laughs> it's got badger after this. Don't worry. Um, I, I think he's touching on good points, though. I will continue to just, you know, I, I will take my stance of just like if you're if you don't know what the fuck you're working on, why are you speaking about it? You don't need fuel tanks. Okay, what's your sources on that? What's your expertise? What degree do you have? What was your department and your title? Oh, I don't work in the armed forces. Then why are you commenting on it? I cannot, as a civilian, comment on the effectiveness of uh, uh, Molly vests, right? I have zero grounds, even though I own one, right? I own one from a military surplus store. I have zero grounds to comment on the combat effectiveness of this because I did not serve. I think that's completely reasonable at the very least. I'm not a specialist in that. I can talk to people that are specialists about that. I'm pretty sure if I ask someone in the server, hey, someone with military experience, I want to talk to you about Molly Vest and their combat effectiveness. I'm sure someone will be like, Kip, I got you. Let's have this conversation. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I got this cool story that you want to hear. Like, and I love that about the people that I meet. Like, it's You guys are super cool. Like, I just... Ugh. Rant over. <laughs> keep it simple, stupid, means keep the explanation simple. Short enough to fit on a headline. And simple enough that even the stupidest yeah, person fair. can understand it. So that they can have something yes, to discuss. Yes, primary sources do rant green, yes. To make them, you know, feel smart again. It doesn't matter if by the time it's gone through that simplification process, it's technically wrong. Mm -hmm. Which is something called hypernormalization. Don't yeah. look it up, it's extremely depressing. What matters <laughs> is that you can sell that idea Fair. to the public, and the, and the public love the simplicity. They, they love being able to have an opinion on something without having to be bogged down by their harsh complications People don't of reality. Like me because I and newspapers, me. well, they, they love to sell down. you that shit. They are selling you opinions that you can redress as your own with absolutely no effort. Simple explanations, which means you don't have to think too hard so you can get on with your busy, busy life right. without letting any of the real problems bother you as you and Cassandra meet for Lattie's that afternoon to discuss those World War One trenches you call eyebrows. And because all no, these oversimplified explanations so are all technically stuff wrong, the same newspapers can throw all that shit at their rivals by fact-checking their explanations. And because those other people got it wrong, well, well, that means we got it right. Because as we all know, there are two sides and only two sides to any story. Literally Again, not how that works. News. They don't want me swearing, but for fuck's sake, it's the price of a cup of coffee, and they will literally point out media narratives to you. Just do yourself a favor. So, when it comes to the ethic, Like, it's not even a polit- it's not even a political thing. Like, opinions aren't necessarily binary. Kip, what's your thoughts on Dead Space Remake? I mean, I, I like it. Oh, so you like it, so clearly you're in the I like it category. I mean, it's not binary. It's not like yes, no. It's it's really not. It's okay. I like it. However, thought train on how like I like certain things and don't like other things, and you know I think that the original did it better. So I fall somewhere in the middle. Like it, it, there in it, itself is its own stance. It's not Y N binary. Ugh. Five, you will hear a lot of shit about it. And I can't it, it I can't carry missile it's very... not stealthy. I can't People carry the fuel for extended like missions, blah, 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 blah. So Or that real. things like this stealth or gimmicks and the existence of the S-400 nullifies it as a viable tactic. Whatever. All courtesy of some moron whose oh. idea of research is typing things into Google. I don't I understand the and logic why people went out on about are almost complete Kendra fabrications Daniels, courtesy like, of a propaganda I was so department. confused. I know some of you all have very strong opinions on the 
at 35 and there has been a lot of shit thrown at it over the years. And if people would like, I might get into some of those in more detail. But for the time being, take this advice. Okay, therefore must you be. Nope. don't know anything about the F-35. Yes, Blogs correct. like War is Boring in 1945 and National Interest do not know anything about the F-35. Okay. Because almost all the information on what makes it such a groundbreaking plane is classified. What is not classified is beyond their understanding, and they make more money calling everything shit as opposed to great. And, and what's not classified is on the War Thunder Forums. <laughs> military experts whose credibility is barely a step above the average Reddit comment, or in some cases, far below it. And of course, propaganda well, rags from four nations backed by their own like military development adapted. companies <laughs> looking to sell their alternative companies to budget militaries in Asia and Africa and South America. Don't buy that, their that expensive is, bullshit, buy right. our expensive bullshit. It's so much more rugged and simple, and that's a good thing, trust us. You'll also note that since Amazing. Russian propaganda channels down. suddenly all got deplatformed, a lot of these blogs are yes. now suddenly saying yes, nice indeed. things about the F-35, almost as if all their sources on just how shit the F-35 is was exclusively, literally, Russian propaganda. Or that recent events have created a sudden shift in the public's opinion, and all those blogs do I've is appeal to that opinion rather than state what is factual. Sites, Again, ground news. Educate yourself. So no, they don't know anything like about the, the F-35 yeah. either. They just spout whatever rhetoric is popular, and half the time they all just copy each other and never question it until it eventually filters down to people like Blacktail, who quote them as a source because... Well, I don't want to just call him stupid, but... Oh my god. This is going to make me depressed, isn't it? I have to look at this. I have to see this. Not that I'm throwing shit at this content creator. I, I just... I need to see this. I have to see this. Okay. So, Wikipedia, technically not viable source. Wikipedia, technically not viable source. Washington Post, Bias News Outlet, NBC News, not technically viable source. I, I, uh, FGP, FAS.org. I would not consider that viable. BreakingDefense.com, not an organization, not a net, not a .gov. Breaking Defense, sounds like an article. MilitaryAerospace.com. Um, Rand.org, I have no idea what the fuck that even is. Nash, what is this? This is not citation. I'm so confused with this. This makes... I'm, well, I'm I don't want to just call them stupid, but quite frankly, the evidence is overwhelming. Yeah, that, so that's please, the one. admit that you know fuck all. The technology and tactics of warfare has fully surpassed that tiny part of your reptilian brain that says, tanks, cool. And please, for the right? love of my sanity, it's so good. War shut Thunder the fuck up about the Air 35. Wild.